Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Friday coaching call. It is Friday, 9-16-2011. The FTC students, you guys uh, received some homework today, and that homework was a quick email from of a recorded copy of the voicemail, or not voicemail, of a conversation I had with the seller this morning. Uh, and I recorded that so that you guys could quickly determine value because a lot of times we do get phone calls in this business where uh, sellers give us a little bit of a heads up and time to get out and look at the property uh, but then a lot of time uh, Okay, I've got a student saying they're not getting sound. Can you guys let me know that you can hear me? Okay. I'll tell them to turn on their speakers. Sorry about that. A little bit of a sidebar there. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for telling me that you can hear me. You can stop now, please. Okay. All right, so if you answered the poll, you are about to see the broad opinion of value on the property represented in the homework. So on your screen right now, you should see the poll results. Now, I have not uh, done my comps on this house yet. I'm actually going to do those live on this call. So, but you see, 56% of the students believe this property is going to be worth 80 to 95,000. 11% believe 95,000 to 105,000. 11% 105 to 120, and 22% actually believe that the property is worth 135 plus. So, this is very interesting. I've got a lot of information on that Robin Lane because I own the pro I own a property. I think it's at 2624. It's a rental that my wife and I have owned for a while, um, and what I'm going to do here is go ahead and give you guys a view. Okay, everybody's had a chance to see the poll results, so we're going to close that and make sure you can see my screen. All right, good deal. Uh, the Vicky, the value I'm asking is for the after repaired value, not the current value, because we always, when we speak in value within flip that contract, we're always talking about after repaired value. Uh, don't ever really care that much about uh, what the value is now, because our intention and our investors' intention is always to improve the property. So, what we're going to do here is log into the Property Analyzer Pro. Property Analyzer Pro is, in essence, MLS. It is uh, provided by the Roddy family at Foreclosure Listing Service. So I've got that open, but the first thing I need to do before I ever try to pull comps is to pull up the tax rolls. Okay, if you're looking at the screen now, these are the tax rolls. You've got try to zoom in here for you. What 
Williams Estates, third installation. Deed transfer date was in 1900. That's quite a ways away. The tax value appears to be 147,000. Uh, it looks like it was revaluated in 2011. Previous to that, we were talking about 20, 2008. So I'm going to show you something in a minute. This is in the DallasCAD.org. Go down, look at the year built, uh, living square footage, garage square footage. Just scroll down. I like to get a good lay of the land, see what I'm looking at. I'm going to click on history. Because I saw the revaluation year, which was this year. And I want to see what this property has been taxed at. Looks like they actually lowered it this year. Uh, so now we're at 123 on the uh, total market value 147 before they were saying 162. So even the appraisal district has lowered the value on this house, which is uh, those of you on this call that know that our landlords know that that's quite impressive. The appraisal district never wants to lower value. So go ahead and go back. And let me zoom out so I can see this normally. Okay, so we've seen the property. on the tax rolls. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead get into Google and this is really helpful when you know the neighborhood and this is why we always encourage you to farm your backyard so to speak because you're able to really drill in and just see if you know these neighborhoods you're able to make some some pretty good determinations now here's the interesting thing the house I have on Robin is You know, Robin Lane bends around, turns into Robin again here. And this is actually mislabeled. And then Robin comes in right here. So my house on Robin that I own So this is my house. Now, we zoom back out. And you can notice there's a whole lot of real estate that separates my little house here in this part of Robin Lane. So, because when you go into this part of Robert, Robin Lane, a 
although the construction seems similar, it's a just it's a completely different neighborhood and a completely different area because here you have rear entry garages, most likely larger houses. This neighborhood actually has some swimming pools in it. And it's separated by Miller Road, which is a very, which is a major road. So, with that said, I know enough about the location now, and I'm going to go ahead and pull my comps. So we're going to start off the first order of business, just to drill down a little bit. I'm going to paste the subdivision in there. Got 21 properties. Dallas County. Make sure we're in 75042. And make sure we're in the city of Garland. Okay, we still have 21 properties. So I'm gonna tab down. We've got 2,600 square feet. Now, when I'm looking at these tax rolls, it says 2,600 square feet, but it has the total living area and the total area as the same, which eh, is always a bit concerning for me because typically I like to see uh, the uh, house and garage when you've got an attached garage like this. Uh, I like to see the garage actually include you should see about a 500 square foot difference on the uh, the living area and total area because it says here that it has an attached garage at 576 square feet so if you do that math and again this is just a desktop approach and the reason we want to do a desktop approach like this is we never try to do phone offers or determine value but that would make this property actually only 2,000 square feet if indeed that 576 square feet from the garage is included in the square footage of 2662. Again, you'll never know until you get there, but we just want to be safe and sorry because the whole point is when we get to the neighborhood, we want to be able to make sure that we have enough data to make a decision. So what I'm going to do here on the square footage is I'm going to take that 2886 and I'm going to subtract 20%. So that's a 1668. I'm going to put 1650 as my minimum square footage in this comp search. Then over here on the max side, I'm going to take the 2662 that it gives me. I'm going to add 20% to it. So I'm going to search between 1650 and 3150 in square footage. Basically what I'm trying to do is weed out any monster houses and weed out any little houses. When you do that, you're left with 14 properties. I'm going to go ahead and hit find properties and see what I come up with. Okay, this is good. Notice all of these properties that pull up on this comp on this property search are north of Miller and east of Shiloh. They're all in this neighborhood. That's very good. These two that are near the, the site, the Shiloh Road, I'm very interested in those already because if you remember off the Google map, the property on Robin is supposed to be, it looks pretty near uh, Shiloh, Shiloh Road. And Shiloh Road is a major thoroughfare. So, We can go ahead and click on Westway and Garland and hit more info. And I like to just read. It it looks like it's sold. Sold in the 130s. Uh, updated four bedroom, three bath house, 2,400 square feet, patio, French doors. It, it's good to see that the, uh, with a big uh, new AC unit, uh, new roof. 
13 sear AC, double pane windows, sprinkler system, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I like to read all that. Uh, solid cooktop, new microwave, built-in microwave and oven, and a kit and and, and uh, a fourth bedroom with a private bath. So I like to see all this because, and I look at the picture, it looks very comparable. So we're going to keep this house on our radar for sure. As a matter of fact, 2410 Westway, go ahead and mark it here with a check. Now, we want to look over here at Patricia. Let me zoom back in. We're going to get all these solds on the map. You've got one pending that was, that's listed for 109. You've got a couple of expired sprinkled in here. You've got a couple of actives at 129, 111, 189. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these canceled. I'm going to get rid of the canceled and expired just so I can get a good feel for this neighborhood. All right. That's that property on Westway. We already looked at it. Here's another property on Westway 2308. So we'll go ahead and go ahead and open that. What we're looking for here is we want to get rid of the properties that aren't remodeled, aren't updated, because the investor we wholesale this property to will be looking to update and remodel it, so he's going to base his value off of solds, not off of, uh, or sold remodeled houses, not off of foreclosures, etc. So, owners, let's see, great updated home in the State, owner spared no expense making this classic shine with modern updates, sealstone countertops, updated kitchen appliances, high efficiency windows, lush landscaping, bright paint, nice carpeting, a great honey, a, a great honey, a great neighborhood, and a great price. I'm not sure if the agent meant to say honey, but whatever. Uh, so, we're going to leave that in there. We'll get down here to 1805 Patton. This is an active listing. And I just like to read newly insulated attic. Uh, lovely custom, older custom home. You know, when they use words like lovely, it just tells me the house isn't in that great of condition. So I'm going to go ahead and click on these pictures. Oh, wrong button. And, I mean, you're... That's showing up as an active listing, 1805 patent. I'm looking for 1802 patent. 1802 Patricia. Sixteen oh nine patent. So again, sold listing reduced top floors, arches, stone fireplace. Now, pull with the gazebo. Mm. I'm going to go ahead and try to get rid of this house. 1609 Patton. I'm going to try to get it out of there because it's one of the only ones with a pool. I'm going to get this one. It has a pool. I'm going to get these houses that have pools out of my list. So that leaves me with three solds and three actives.
Go ahead and open that up. We'll print these. I'm going to go ahead and print these to PDF. That way I have them for later and I can email them. Uh, you should all have the PDF 995 driver. If you don't, just Google PDF 995. Uh, I like to keep all these files in a working folder. Uh, in my Dropbox account. That way I have them with me anywhere I go. So this is the property report. So now I've got my property report. Now what I'm going to do is get out of here. I'm going to get back into uh, Property Analyzer Pro, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to a comp search because I want to print a CMA. Uh, and I want you guys to be able to see the CMA as well. So what we're going to look for right now Williams Estate, Dallas County, City of Garland, we'll see what we got. I'm going to refer back to the three souls that I looked at earlier. We got 2410 Westway. We got and the problem is here we pulled in a lot of smaller houses. We had 2410 Westway, 1802 Patricia, and 2308 Westway. These other houses look just, they're, they're way too small when you look here at the square footage. So we want to just pretty much get rid of it. Then we want to get rid of this one because it has a pool. So we're going to remove the check. gives us three. Now I'm going to check all and get report link. And now you see the good CMA. And what we're looking at is an average square footage of 2,000 square feet, an average sales price of 122.5. You've got some three bedrooms and four bedrooms, a couple with three baths. So, what I'm going to do right now, since I want to go ahead and get my comps and make sure I have good comps ready for me. And I'm going to call this seller up, see if I can't find out how many bedrooms and baths it is. Uh, just kind of one of those important things that I like to, uh, I didn't get on the, on the call, but no big deal because I've already got, I've already got an appointment. So, I mean, I can take this data with me. I've got a two, I've got three and four bedrooms. I've got two and three baths. But uh, I might just go ahead and see if I can't feel a little bit better about the comps I'm getting. It, it, it's good to see these two. You got one at 2,100 square feet and one at 2,400 square feet. And like I said, we don't know if ours is 26 or 20 or 2,000. Uh, it's either 2,086 or it's 2,662. So it's it's one or the other. Calling the seller on the other line. 
and seller didn't answer. Leave her a message real quick. Hey Jane, Tim Harris, uh, give me a call please. I wanted to make sure, I forgot to write it down, how many bedrooms and baths that house is over in Rock. So give me a call, 214-607-1227. Thanks, bye, bye Okay, so left your message. I'm fairly certain that we're gonna go with, with, with these comps. Uh, you know, you can look on, on, on the, the appraisal district you can see that it's, it says it's a three bedroom, two bath. Uh, but just in my experience, the appraisal district, they don't know how many bedrooms a house is. They, uh, they just know the square footage and the location and most of the time they're wrong. So I don't really go off of what the square foot, what the appraisal district says with regards to bedrooms and baths. Uh, I'm going to look back here at my properties and what I can tell let me see is there a way to restore let me open this back up what I can tell is typically in a 2,000 square foot house you either have several living areas or you have four bedrooms so I'm assuming right now that this house is going to have four bedrooms. So on paper, if the house is 2,086 square feet, because they have the garage included in at 60 bucks a foot, we're looking at a $125,000 house. If the house is the 2662, at $59 a foot, you're looking at $157,000 house. Broad range, broad disparity, I know, but on paper is one thing once you get to the property is another. So let me print this. I'm going to print it to PDF 995 again. So this is just going to be my CMA. Again, I'm putting it in my working folder for Robin. Just save that. And now, what I have here is I've got a PDF that I can use for when I try to market my property. And I've got a printout with several actives in the area. Now here you have a two bedroom that's at 1,800 square feet. Lord, wouldn't you love to see the uh, the messed up? Uh, it says it's configured configured as a two bedroom with two living areas. Uh, lots of remodeling already done. I can imagine that that is going to be one interesting house to look at. You've got this one, another two bedroom at two thousand square feet. Are you kidding? Me? Three living areas, two large bedrooms, walk-in closets. Oh wow, they're gonna have trouble selling that one. Then you see this nice 2,100 square foot, four bedroom, two bath. I would imagine this is a lot more like the property that we're gonna be walking into next week with uh, one of my VIP students that's going with me, Andrew. Uh, yeah, I mean. When you look at the elevation of this house, this house, and this house, it looks a lot more like what we're going to be walking into. So hopefully it's a four bedroom. If it's not, we'll make some adjustments on in the field. And uh, you know, the, the, guys, these are this is just more reasons that you can't be a desktop appraiser. Uh, what I'll actually do here is I'll probably take all of these solds with me into the field just so I have a broader range of, of available comps in case I get there and uh, it doesn't appear to be what it appeared to be on paper. Because remember, I, mean, I really stress this and I'll always stress this, 
the value of making an offer in person is huge. If you can make the uh, if you can make the offer while you're there on the spot, if you can show up and get these get it nailed on the spot, it just shows your professionalism and it shows that you're ready to do the deal. Uh, so, yeah, the good pointer is don't go off the appraisal district and always look. Uh, I'll show you an example real quick on the appraisal district. Uh, because you got to remember, these appraisal districts, they don't walk inside the houses. They drive by. They've got an exterior measurement. And that is that. Uh, let me see. See, I'll pick a house that I know. So this is a house Jennifer and I own. That is one of our rentals. And here it says living area 1404, total area 1404. I'm here to tell you this is not a 1400 square foot house. It also says that it has three bedrooms, and I'm here to tell you it has four. Uh, it does have one and a half baths, and it does have one kitchen. So the, both the bedrooms and the square footage on this house are incorrect. Uh, let me search address. Here's another property on Cheyenne and Rowlett that I own. Again, total living area 1317. And then there's a, there, and then there's a garage at 648. Now, in this case, the property is actually 1317 square living square feet with a with a very large two car garage, but it says it's a two bedroom when it's indeed a four. So, uh, <laughs> couldn't we play this game a lot? Uh, address. So here's another property that I own in Mesquite. Again, this one, the garage is listed separate from the total area. So this house is indeed 1,300 square feet, but you notice it says it's a zero bedroom. Uh, I promise you, I do not own a rent house that is a zero bedroom. Uh, this is actually a three bedroom, two bath. So again, this is probably the best example I could find of a error on the tax rolls. You can go here. Apparently, it's another property we own. And here you have 1,805 square feet with a 500 square foot garage. And this is actually one of those situations where the garage is separate from the square footage. So this is actually accurate uh, because there's 1,805 square feet of living area in this house. So let's see if there's one more I can do. This is a property I just recently assigned. And so here's another one where you have 1,214 square feet. Let me zoom in here for you. 1,214 square feet. Then you have the room addition of 208 square feet. Then you have the garage of 440 square feet. So now when you add the 208 into the 1214, that's where you get up with the total area of 1422 
and then you've got so it looks like the appraisal district actually made some changes recently and uh, now the total area is they're trying to just do living area but you can't always go by by that because it can be wrong so I mean, you've got to walk the house and get a good feel of it and make sure that the garage isn't uh, included in the total living area so it's about 145 that's really all I wanted to cover today uh, just to get you guys just real quick in, in, immersed into uh, property valuation and uh, at this time I'll go ahead and open it up for questions Okay. So on the MLS, the, the per square sales price is based on what? It's based on whatever the tax rules say. Uh, it's a good question. So, let me see. I'm trying to show you guys something real quick. So, here's one of our comps on Patricia. Now, this, this property, you see here where it says, based on the square footage of 2129. And that's according to the tax. So if you pull up the tax rolls, what you have here, again, according to the tax rolls is, the living square footage is 2129 and the building square footage is 2635. And through this program you can actually pull up the building sketch. And uh, And you can actually look at the layout of the building. Uh, you've got this add-on uh, that looks like it's probably a second story or something. So the square footage is based off of what the tax rolls say the living square footage is. Can we do another bus tour? Yes, we can do another bus tour, Brian, uh, but it's going to cost you. Uh, the Robin Lane House Survey, uh, the, the, the correct value is really dependent on the actual size of the property. Man, we don't know yet until we get there. Uh, I'll tell you that, let's see. According to this version of the tax rolls, we're going to be looking at a 2,390 square foot house. And uh, if that is the case, then it's probably a $130,000 house. Uh, we'll look at the building sketch real quick. So it looks like there might be a bit of an add-on or a patio cover. Uh, we just got to figure out what that is. So, wow, y'all slow down with these questions. You're, you're getting past me here. Uh, so right now, Stacy, there is no correct answer on what the value is. As far as I'm concerned, right now, the value is, we're going to say, 125, uh, just to be on the low side. And if we get out there and find something different, uh, you know, we, we can go up. 
So let's see. So when I look at the decad living area, is supposed to is it supposed to not include the garage? Uh, Joe, I was looking at that just a second ago. This is one of those houses we were just looking at. Here you see 2129 square feet. It's a 500 square foot attached garage. Now, this is very interesting because when we were looking at this exact property in a different version of the tax rolls, Not 1802 Rob and Tim, 1802 Patricia. So here you see, this one says it's 2129 square feet, 2635 total building area. 2129 square feet. So it appears that this is showing the actual total, the actual living area. And uh, Joe used to, before this year, uh, in the, the Dallas Appraisal District, most of the time the total area inclu included the garage. It seems as if by these samples we've just made, they've changed that. Uh, that's going to be a good question that I'm going to have to look into. Uh, and I will, um, I'll get back to you on that. Uh, it appears as if they've now changed it where the living square foot and a total area both reflect the living square footage and then the garage is separate. It's not the way it's supposed to be. Uh, if you go to you go to the Collin County Appraisal District uh, I'm going to make fun of myself a little bit here. 309 Forest Grove. This is the, one of the houses that I lost the most money money on ever. $63,000 I lost on this house. And I lost it because I went off of the tax rolls. Here you see where I sold it in May of 08. According to the Collin website, these are different, so just give me a sec. Let me... Ah. 2,200 square feet, according to the Collin County website. Guess what, guys? This house isn't 2,200 square feet. Still says it. This property is, if I remember correctly, 1,800 square feet. Let me... Sold, search, so where are we? Three hundred nine Forest Grove. You see where I sold the house for 223 and actually now I correct myself the house is actually 2200 square feet but the tax rolls at the time I purchased it said it was 2800 square feet and I did not clarify that and uh, it it fit me on the back side literally let me see if I can get in here Boy, I 
at this house. So here you see 2,200 square feet, total building area. And what they did is they had this, these numbers were wrong whenever I bought it. And I made a big, big, big mistake. But hey, that's why you're learning from me, because you don't want to make the mistakes I've made. And I've, in a thousand houses, I've made plenty. Total area is supposed to be living, yep, yeah, I already answered that. How do you measure square footage along the property? I go largely off a of feel. As I walk the property, if, it, if the property says it's 2,000 square feet, I go largely off field. If you don't want to go off a field and you actually want to measure it, you need to get yourself a 100-foot tape measure, preferably one of those wheel tape measures. And you have to get a piece of paper and break it down. And just measure length times width equals square foot. And then add, them, add up all the little boxes you create. All right, you're in on the bus trip. Cool. Uh, Julie asked if I've been using only Property Analyzer Pro, DCAD, and Google to get your info. Uh, some other program. Uh, you know, Julia, I've never used InvestWay, so I really can't comment on that. Uh, I use. Property Analyzer Pro and uh, just MLS because I have access through my wife. Yes, Jaime, the last three calls have been recorded and the they are available on the YouTube channel. Just go to flip that con go to youtube.com slash flip that contract and they are there. And uh, for you students that are wondering why you didn't know about them, it's because you didn't follow the steps in module one which was to subscribe to my YouTube channel, the Flip That Contract YouTube channel. So if you were subscribed to the YouTube channel, you would have gotten a notification that those were available. If you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, well, then you probably didn't know. Uh, the price to offer on that house will base more or less on the results of the SOS sheet. Yes, and I'll show you a quick SOS in a second, Heidi. Uh, I really like how you show us a lot of executive steps you're taking. Oh, thank you. Stacy, uh, bus trip. Uh, bus trip is not scheduled yet. Uh, we will be having a bus trip, uh, but round two of flip that contract will start in mid October, and as part of that, we're going to offer a bus trip to everyone and uh, current students and, and, and uh, the first rounders, if we'll, as we'll call you. Uh, you'll receive special discounts because you put a lot of faith in me and George to uh, start this program. Uh, Let's see. Uh, one of the students wants to know if anybody's received calls from the postcards they've sent. And I can tell you this. Yes, students have received calls. Uh, but I'm really afraid you guys might be doing it the wrong way because you shouldn't be worried about if you've received calls. Uh, yes, all the time. Yes, lots and lots of calls. Uh, it's opportunistic. Uh, did you, it, those of you that listened to the uh, voicemail, the, the current students listen to the voicemail today, know that what that lady said as she got on the phone. She said, I don't know how you knew to send this to me now. Well, there was no real reason I knew to send it to her now. We just happened to. It's happenstance. Because they had owned the house for so long and it met my other criteria. She happened to get the postcard the week she was going through a life-altering event, and that spurred her to call immediately. So, uh, Mr. Farmer, everybody else is saying they've received calls from your postcards. Have you mailed all of your postcards? Uh, when you were here last week, you had a 1,000 that were sitting on your desk, and you were going to mail them, and I'm not really sure where you are on that. Uh, sorry, it's been so loud here, guys. Uh, I work in a busy real estate office and it's Friday and there's a lot of houses being sold in the next room. Uh, I will tell you guys that very soon George and I will be debuting the turnkey real estate investment system uh, or the turnkey uh, mailing system that we've been working very hard on. It will have all of our postcard templates uploaded in it and you'll be able to upload your list, hit send, pay for it, and be done. Uh, you'll also be able to 
buy list from them. And it, so even if you're in New Jersey, you'll be able to get a zip code mailer based on the criteria that we've taught you. You'll be able to hit click, click, send. It's, uh, we, are, we are working on getting the price down because the price was too high to where, yeah, I can offer you all the convenience in the world, but I don't want you paying twice as much for the, uh, I don't want you paying twice as much for the uh, postage and, and printing as you need to. Uh, yeah, if anybody ever needs any AC work, just give uh, Jaime Salas a call. He is one of the FTC students. Stacy, time frame for what? Brian, thank you. Got a time frame. Release of what? <laughs> I'm going to keep asking you questions. The new program? Ah, the next training module. Uh, tentatively, folks, Flip That Contract will be available again the second or third week of October, tentatively. Right now, we're focused more on the current students. Uh, I'm just trying to get more people involved in it, uh, just uh, out of generosity. But I can't send non-students some of the, I mean, the stuff I'm sending the students, I just can't. Uh, any other questions? It's 2 o'clock. It's Friday. Bragging rights. <laughs> uh, it's a beautiful day, 80-something degrees outside. Going once. Going twice. Ah. Yes, we're working on that. Uh, I haven't heard of anyone, Jeff, that has actually put a house under contract and assigned it. Uh, I'm hoping to hear that very soon. Uh, you know, there's a lot of confusion in the marketing, and starting soon, we're going to re-record all seven, all six coaching calls. Uh, but you know, George and I have been real upfront. This is a it's a consistency approach, but it's also a timing approach, and. I would bet you if I took a straw poll of the students in the course, I would bet you 0% sent their zip code mailers out the first week of September as instructed. Uh, just kind of the way it goes. There's a lot of fear in this business. There's a lot of fear in any business, in any new venture. And I completely understand that. And but you guys have paid me for some confidence, and, I'm, and, and, and the confidence is you need to trust that I know what I'm talking about. I have been doing this 10 years. I bought over a 1,000 houses, and as a matter of fact, uh, to show you, because I like to show and tell, you've got... Here is the executed contract I received today on a house in Garland. I'll be wholesaling. Here's the update from the title company on a house that I'll be closing next week on an assignment. Let's see. Here's two other executed contracts that I got back this week and turned into the title company. It's it's for real. I mean, and I can tell you these two. I'll tell you right now, uh, Pindar probate list, Ivy Way zip code mailer. I can tell you the other thing, Arrowhead, Arrowhead I've been working for almost four months and just since August 18th, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten different emails that that went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth with the seller. It, it, it takes consistency. It takes dedication. It doesn't matter uh, 
doesn't matter who they call or when or when they call or why they call. You just need to make them call. And, you, and, and the way to make them call is to mail these things consistently and quickly so that you can capitalize. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, Stacy, that's a good one. Uh, you know, the, the thing is, is September's over. We can't change what you did or didn't do in September, but we what we can change is what you can do going forward. So uh, I wasn't going to give homework because it's such a pretty weekend, but what the heck. Uh, got some of you still on the call. We'll have some fun here. We'll... I know you're, you're all probably hanging up now like, uh-uh, I don't want any homework. So let me get in here. Go to the steps order. Here we go. <laughs> That's like paying for college but never going to class. Stacy, you're cracking me up. You've got to quit. Uh, okay. Here's your homework. All of you on this call, all 17 of you, email I'm going to have to change this uh, email flip that con edu at flipthatcontract.com and let me know one what is your six month budget Two, your primary area of operation. Three, what your lead sources that you're going to work. Four. How do I get on your buyer's list? Uh, let's see. What phone number I can call if I was a seller? to get a hold of you. If you have a, a lead website, I'd like to know that. Let me see. I want a copy of your business card. I would like an SOS that covers the property on Robin. If you're not a current student, just do your best and just tell me everything you got. Primary verb or area of operation, lead source commitment, how do you get on my, how do I get on your buyers list, lead phone number, lead website, copy of your business card. Uh, the name of your business. Now, if you do all that, here's my freebie for you. One day, let me 
see. Let me open up my calendar. On Wednesday, September 28th. We'll all go to a private lunch together. So everyone that completes these nine items. Now, if you are not, if you do not have a copy of the SOS, you don't need because you're not a current student. You don't need to send me the SOS. You need to, but it, you need to address every one of these and send it to me. Now, clarification: I'm not buying your lunch, and you're not buying my lunch. You're going to meet me somewhere. We're going to have a big, long, hour and a half long lunch. And we're going. You got to be kidding me! Uh, people, don't paste it into this thing. You have to email me as per the instructions. Uh, we'll all go have lunch. We'll, have, we'll all network. Uh, again, I'm not buying your lunch. Let's make that perfectly clear. I don't, I don't want 30 people to show up expecting to get a free lunch from me. Uh, but I, I, I want you to do this because if you do this, which what a lot of you are sitting on this call right now are thinking is, crap, I can't go to lunch because I haven't done the hard work. Well, guys and gals, do the hard work. Get this set up. Get committed because if you'll do this, in the deadline for this, let me see. When are we doing that? The 28th? So the deadline is noon Monday. That's the deadline for the lunch invitation. So if you have me everything by 12 noon Monday, September 19th, you will receive an invitation to go to lunch and meet me and many other students to network and uh, get together and uh, then we will all together discuss your plans, discuss the happenings that's going on and uh, we'll try to, uh... oh sorry, can't be Wednesday because George does his student trainings on Wednesday. So we're going to make it a Tuesday, Tuesday, September 27th because I don't have a ride along that day. So Tuesday, September 27th is when we'll do it. Sorry about that. That way George can attend to. We'll do it somewhere in Dallas, mid cities, uh, North Dallas, something like that where everybody can be, can meet up. And then we'll go from there. I mean, so again, I'm going to zoom into this. So that you guys can write it down and then I am going to go enjoy my Friday. Email your budget, your area of operation, your lead source commitment, which leads you work, how I can get on your buyers list, your lead phone number, which number I can call, if which number you print on your advertising for people that want to call you. If you have a website, a squeeze page, just send me that. Again, that's not a requirement. Copy of your business card. I need to see an SOS on Robin if you're a current student. And uh, then your entity name. So we'll all get together and have a big networking lunch for those that do this. And uh, that's that. Any questions? Oh, gosh almighty, you guys. All right, it's Friday, man. I'm going to blow through these questions. I'm out of here. Oh, a lot of LOLs. Sorry. Um, if you're mailing to absentee owners, does it matter what time of the month you send marketing material? Yes, I've already told you this six times. Mail your zip code mailers, which include your absentee owners, on the first week of every month. That way you're consistent. Don't do this, send it now, send it later, send it now, send it later. You're inconsistent, scatterbrained, and unorganized that way. 
They need to hit the first week of the month. Anybody else? All right, everybody have a great weekend. I uh, thought this was a pretty good call. I did record the call. I am stopping the recording now. And uh, you can, oh, we got a hand raised. Who is raising their hand? Do you need to ask something? Uh, <laughs> what kind do I drink? Cold. Uh, you guys are raising your hands. Do you want to talk to me? Uh, Julia, did you have a question? I've unmuted you. No? Jaime, I mean, did you have a question? I've unmuted you. No? <laughs> it's okay. No big deal. Uh, everybody, have, a, have an excellent weekend. And... Uh, Get out there and knock them dead. Again, this is Tim Harridge, flipthatcontract.com. Uh, check us out. If you're not a current student, I hope you join in a couple weeks when it's available again. If you are a current student, I hope you actually listen to what we're teaching you and uh, start practicing. We'll see you later.